Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Stock Market Show. This is your host, Shades. As always, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I'm dancing my head back and forth, side to side. But no, seriously. I told you not to sell. Hopefully you guys like the new intro, but let's talk about color stock here. Color stock, it's a buy. I'm not going to wait for a dollar and under. Seems like we're finally turning things around with Trump and China. That's really the biggest thing right now that's holding the markets back. Anytime Trump says, hey, we've got deals, we've got deals, you know, everything's going great with China. Any positive news from this administration, the market reacts by pumping. That tells me we're just waiting for all of this to go away and we should be in the clear for the bull run. If we're looking at just that alone. Obviously, there's other factors. <laughs> I mean, maybe recession and all that, whatever. But with regards to color stock, I think it's a buy now. Start buying it. Start buying it. I think this is going to skyrocket in the future. I was looking through. We're not even going to look at the charts today, but I will say one more thing. The last time this one got a crossover on the weekly, it pumped huge from one. Look at that. From 40 cents to 549. And uh, looks like it's getting primed and ready. We'll see if it happens. But let me just show you one example of a stock that just recently got a crossover. And that is Mara stock. Recently just got that crossover on the weekly. Every time that's happened, guess what? It pumps. It pulled back. It's still pumped anyways. Pumped. Pumped every single time it's been a money maker in fact if you get a crossover and it just goes sideways even better as long as it doesn't tank so that is your signal to buy color if you want to wait for a specific indicator to tell you when to buy because the last time that happened you could have bought here at like around 118 no wait no at 50 cents my bad i gotta move this up yeah there we go Actually, the crossover happened at around, really, it happened at around 25 cents. Interesting. And then it pumped. Yeah, so I needed to move up the uh, the MACD here so I can see the clear signal there. Yeah, here it pumped. Here it crossed over, right? And it pumped huge. So you can wait for that signal if you want, or you can start accumulating here. It's up to you how you want to play it. You can go either way. I was waiting for Mario to cross over on its weekly MACD so I can buy in and, you know, start riding it up. That's a signal to start buying. So up to you how you want to go about it. Now, let's just close the charts because uh, that's it for the charts right now. I wanted to look at the numbers here. The annual numbers. They've been climbing, but it's been very steady. It hasn't been like these huge, you know, 2x or 3x pump in total revenue. The numbers have been going up slowly. So that's just something I wanted to point out. Point out. Uh, hopefully, I'm hoping this next quarter we start seeing more growth in terms of their revenue because uh, right now it's like it's just real slow and every q1 is like the weakest like 1.76 q1 2023 q1 2024 1.75 i would like to see a jump to 2 million plus like i want to start seeing some growth here that's it that's all i wanted to point out with regards to the uh the bottom line really that's all that matters to me is the bottom line assets to liabilities ratio it's good nothing to be concerned about there uh, debt to any company that's starting out like this is going to have debt so i'm not concerned about that and we did get i believe we got some news well we got some news yesterday but it was we already knew this one color awarded 6.7 million by texas space commission to advance cold temperature color one space battery platform I think we already went over this one so there's no reason to uh, talk about that but if we were to go to the website i initially i like this company because i was looking at the battery side of things you know i was looking at the battery side of things you know they got color one space 100 series 200 series 300 i mean they got everything here but they added a, the robotic section and i clicked on it and uh I was looking at this video here. I'm gonna, I don't wanna be copyright stricken, so I'm not gonna play the volume on that, but that's the exoskeleton. And I guess, it, I don't know, I was looking at this and I'm like, okay, it's an exoskeleton that helps you. I guess it helps UPS drivers, not drivers. Well, I guess UPS drivers too, right? 
<laughs> Imagine we seeing a UPS driver with an exoskeleton. But yeah, I, I, people who work at these jobs, warehouses, picking up boxes, I guess it would help you not strain your back. But in my mind, why would we need this exoskeleton? Shouldn't the machines eventually get to the point to where they, they the, the machines are going to do the work? We won't have to work. The machines will do everything. So, so this exoskeleton, I guess, for short term, you know, right now. But in the future, the machine should... The humanoid robot should technically replace us. And we don't have to worry about straining anything for that matter. If you get, get where I'm going with here. I'm thinking far, far future. But I guess short term, this is, you know, useful. Although... <laughs> You'll never catch me wearing one. That's that's kind of laziness too. That's so funny. It's laziness. You you really don't want to squat every time you pick up something. You you have to. You need a. I guess you know. I guess a. I guess it works, right? If you think about it for a second, people don't want to be disciplined and patient and lose weight by exercising and and eating healthy. No, they want to take the pills and and they want they want to lose weight doing anything but that. <laughs> Let me put it that way. So it's funny how there's a product out there specifically for, I guess people don't, they don't want to squat. <laughs> I've never worked one, one of these jobs, but I, I'll tell you right now, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to, you know, use proper form here. Like you're squatting, like, like you're using a barbell on your shoulders and you're squatting down. Like, but I, I guess people don't follow that. So they developed these exoskeletons. Uh, that kind of, uh, well... <sighs> You know, it would be cool if this exoskeleton can also help, like, lift the boxes up. You know, just make it easier for you to carry things around. Maybe hold some of the weight. That would be good, too, if they add that. Let me see what else it says. But, yeah, I was just curious about the robotic side. And I'm just trying to think ahead. Like, I guess short term for now. But, I mean, in the future, we would expect the machine to be doing everything. We don't need to be straining no anything at that point. There shouldn't be injuries because the machines, what, they're going to injure their machine parts? Ooh, oh no. A Pogi Ultra is a wearable exoskeleton designed to reduce strain and prevent injuries, especially in the lower back. Yeah, I figured it learns and adapts to the user movements. Interesting. Providing real-time support for lifting and repetitive tasks. Unlike autonomous robots, this is worn by humans, enabling workers to do their jobs more safely and reducing turnover and fatigue. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, because autonomous robots can't do it right now. We're not at the point where autonomous robots can live, do all the lifting, but we will get to that point. We will get to that point. So, this is cool short term, but uh, long term, I would imagine it would eventually be phased out if we're thinking ahead here. Either way, I like it. I like it. I like it. But, but the thing is, my dad works at a. I think he works at a warehouse, if I recall. And he said that they were, they had like robots, like humanoid robots, like doing, they were doing like some testing with humanoid robots to see how well they perform the job versus like a human. And uh, yeah, so, but they're in the beta stage or whatever. I, I don't, I don't remember the details, but yeah, I, I wonder, it'll be good short term. Long term, they'll be, this this will be useless. Um, it'll be a thing of the past, kind of like the Nintendo, you know, Wii. Like it, it'll just be like the Nintendo 64. It'll just be a thing of the past once the robots take over. That's what I'm thinking. Let's see, walking augmentation. It's yeah, cause we yeah, I, I can agree with this. Labor intensive manual handling tasks. Whatever you can do to make their lives easier, the better. I can agree with that. Everything that's coming is going to be incredible, but it's also like at some point it's going to be old technology. And so what comes after that is going to be even better. That's just how it's been. That's just how it's been. How it's always been, right? We had the little, we had radios back then. Now we had, then we had the what? The the big TVs, the big fat ones. And now we have monitors and yeah, they just kept getting skinnier and smaller and better. Who knows what the future holds, but I think color stock is a great investment I'll see you in the next one.
to knowledge, the lessons are clear Swinging these trays, year after year 